Hey, this is Felix, and in this video, I want to share some thoughts on the Herman Miller Aeron after more than two years of daily usage. For reference, I'm 5'7 and a half and weigh around 150 to 160 pounds depending on time of year and the type of meal. After consulting the Herman Miller chair size chart, I went for a size B in graphite. I also opted for the fully loaded version with leather pads and the polished frame. The thought process behind my choices was pretty simple. I picked a graphite mainly because it is the cheapest option out of the three colorways. The mineral colorway didn't really fit into my office and the black colorway didn't warrant the additional 100 euros that I would have to spend. And honestly the black didn't look all that different to the graphite at the end of the day, so graphite it was. The polished frame was something I was pretty certain I would get from the beginning since it does elevate the overall look of the chair quite a bit. And since I personally value my working environment a lot and believe that an aesthetic setup puts me in a better mood and in turn allows me to be more effective and productive, I decided to spend the extra 250 euros or so to upgrade it. The upgrade to leather arm pads was also an easy choice since I like the feel of leather. Here I actually have an extra pair of standard arm pads since at the beginning of the, well, at the time of ordering this chair, the seller didn't have an Aeron with leather pads in stock. So they sent me one with standard pads first and sent the leather pads a month or two later. The installation process was very simple and self-explanatory and can be done by anyone with a screwdriver and half of a brain. When comparing the two, I was actually a bit surprised how similar the pads felt. The standard pads honestly felt just as comfortable as the leather pads when leaning into. The plastic doesn't feel cheap at all. The only difference is truly only the touch. The standard pads feel more rough while the leather is very smooth and supple. If you're not that set on having leather surfaces, you can confidently skip this upgrade. When it comes to adjustability, the Aeron has most of what you'd expect to find on an ergonomic chair in this price segment. There are four different tilting stages that you can set the chair to. First, there is the neutral stage, which I will call stage zero from now on. In stage zero, everything is locked in. But do note that it is normal that there is still a little play when you lean back in this stage. I actually sent back my very first chair I bought because I thought this was a defect and bought a second chair from a different seller, which behaved the same way. Then I went to test out a few other errands in showrooms just to be absolutely certain. So yes, there is some play in stage zero when leaning back. It's not a defect. To get into stage one, which allows you to lean back around 45 degrees, you rotate the inner ring clockwise until it clicks. To get into stage two, which allows you to lean back even further, you rotate the same ring until it clicks again. You can't lock the chair in the lean back position. What you can do, however, is adjust the tension of the mechanism to allow for very easy lean backs. Personally, I like to have a bit of resistance when I lean back, and the way I would describe the stiffness I've chosen is the feeling of being gently caught and held by the chair. If we now get back to stage zero, we can then get into stage minus one, which is the forward tilt. You don't necessarily have to first get back to stage zero, but I will do it for the sake of explaining it here. Once back to stage zero, turn the outer knob counterclockwise and lean back slightly to disengage the mechanism that prevents you from leaning forward. You will hear a click and then you'll be able to lean forward. Unlike stage one and two, the Aeron stays in position even if you are not uh, sitting in it in this stage. By default, you will be able to lean back and forth. However, you can fix the chair in the tilt position if you now turn the inner knob counterclockwise. Personally, I occasionally use this to change up my seating position a bit by straightening up my back and opening up my chest by engaging my shoulder blades. It is also a position I like when I'm reading or writing something on paper or on the iPad. If you want to tilt back and forth, you can also rotate the inner knob clockwise to allow you to get into stage one or two. The tension adjustment is self-explanatory. It allows you to fine tune everything to your specific liking. With the fully loaded armrests, you can adjust the height, the angles and the position. In this regard, I have to say though, that while the height adjustment mechanism as it is does allow you to fine tune everything, getting both armrests to the same height does require some patience. The angles and the positions, on the other hand, are more easy to get uniform since they come in increments. One drawback on the Aeron is that you can't adjust the width of the armrests, which might be a deal breaker for some. 
For me personally, I do sometimes wish that the armrests are a bit narrower towards the backside, though I circumvent this by angling the armrest outwards if I really feel the need to do so. It looks funny, yes, but it does work. All in all, I wouldn't say that this is something that bothers me too much. The tension or the stiffness of the lumbar support can be adjusted by turning a knob on the back of the chair. Personally, I like it around medium stiffness. One last thing in regards to adjustability to note here is that the seat depth can't be changed. So if you're extra tall, I probably would look elsewhere for another chair. All right, now let's talk about comfort. When I first started using this chair, I had an adjustment period of about two to three weeks. During that time, my lower back and shoulders got pretty sore every time I sat in a chair for more than an hour or so. Which, to be honest, shouldn't have surprised me, <laughs> looking back at the chair I was using prior to the Aeron. The Aeron basically forced me into a sitting position that didn't further morph me into a human seat. Nowadays, I could literally sit at my desk for 8 to 10 hours, with just small breaks in between and feel fine. But it also kind of ruined any other non-ergonomic chair for me, especially chairs without proper armrests and lumbar support. I sometimes really do wonder how I managed to study at a desk on a wooden stool for hours at a time for the majority of my college years. It's marvelous, really. In order to help you find the most comfortable position for you, I would recommend you to pay attention to the following four points. First, make sure that your feet aren't dangling off the chair. If you have a higher than normal desk, like myself, you most definitely will need to add in a footrest. Ideally, you will want your knees at close to a 90 degree angle when sitting down with your feet flat. Second, make sure that your armrests are at the same height as your desk. Don't be hanging onto your desk with your wrists while you're having your elbows in the air, especially when you are typing for long stretches of time. Third, make sure you are sitting all the way back to the chair so you actually benefit from the lumbar support. And finally, make sure that the top of your monitor is at around eye level when you are sitting upright. These are general guidelines I personally found particularly useful when trying to make sure I wasn't sitting in a compromised position all day long. I've seen some reviews where people complain about not being able to sit cross-legged or sit on one of their feet on the air run. And to those people I can only say that you have missed the point of buying an ergonomic chair. Why buy an ergonomic chair if you want to continue to sit in a compromised position? It's like trying to lose weight, but every time you go get groceries, you'll still go for the cookies instead of the carrots. It's like trying to save money, but first thing you do when sitting down in front of your computer is go on Amazon. It just doesn't really make much sense to me. The seat is designed the way it is for a reason, which is to help you correct your posture and minimize the risk of deformation and back pain. If you want to sit however you want, go get a lazy bag and don't waste your money on the air on. Now let's talk about the durability. When it comes to the mesh, I haven't had any issues with it so far. It didn't lose its elasticity in any way and is still just as comfortable as day one. It also hasn't shown any wear and tear up until now and I haven't been particularly kind to the chair either. Same goes with the leather pads. They are very durable, all things considered. What I have noticed, however, is that there seems to be a higher than normal accumulation of dust on the surface directly under the mesh. So it requires relatively frequent cleaning. This is probably due to the rubbing of the fabrics with the mesh, but neither the clothes or the mesh show any noticeable wear and tear, so it is just a minor nuisance. The polished aluminium is quite prone to micro scratches, especially towards the wheels where your feet come in contact with the aluminium itself. And I've only been wearing Birkenstocks while sitting here, which don't have particular hard soles. So your mileage may vary depending on what kind of shoes you're wearing, or if any at all. But you won't really notice the scratches unless you examine them in close distance. The mechanisms have all held up very well without much maintenance on my side, besides the occasional dust cleaning. But I will probably do a general maintenance in the next 6 to 12 months, just to be sure. To conclude, I can very confidently say that the Aeron has been very much worth it for me. It has been a great addition in terms of improving the quality of my life and the efficiency and productivity of my work. At first glance, it might seem absurd to pay this much money for a mere chair. But when you look at the bigger picture, which is one that encompasses your health and well-being over the next few decades, you might begin to understand why it can be a worthwhile investment after all. The Aeron is iconic for a reason. It has a proven track record of durability and the 12-year warranty from Herman Miller speaks for itself. 
The company will not give you a 12-year warranty if it has not done a thorough risks and benefits analysis and concluded that it will not lose money by doing this. A company will not do this if it doesn't have total confidence in its own products. And my own experience thus far and that of many others do not refute this. I'm not sponsored to make this video and the statement, neither by Herman Miller or anyone else for that matter. It is what I believe to be true and believe that a good chair will be very beneficial to you too, dear viewer. It doesn't have to be an error. It doesn't even have to be a chair from Herman Miller. But you should seriously think about and think over and take into account what the long-term repercussions and consequences of neglecting your posture can be. You can always make more money, but you might not get back your health once it's gone. And now, some final notes on where and how to buy an Aeron. Personally, and for warranty reasons, I would recommend you to get a brand new chair from either Herman Miller directly or a certified retail partner. Preferably one that has an in-house workshop for repairs and maintenance. I got mine at a certified retail partner in Germany. You also want to check on the return policies because you'll definitely want to try one out over a week or two before you make a final decision. Ideally, you want a shop where they offer you a 30-day return window. Also, some places allow you to make an offer instead of paying full price. In my case, I made an offer for 1600 euros and they accepted it. So try to haggle a bit, don't shy away from that. And finally, remember that buying an ergonomic chair is like buying a pair of shoes. Make sure the chair fits your body just like you would want a shoe to fit your foot and not the other way around. If the Aeron doesn't feel right, try the M body. Try the steel case gesture and so on. You get the point. Anyways, this is all I have to say for now. I didn't include the Atlas headset in this video since it is really getting pretty long. If there is enough interest, I might do a follow up video going over the Atlas in the future. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in that. Other than that, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, and see you in the next one. Adios.